There are some things we just leave up to the experts, and that includes the science and research that goes into the waste isolation pilot plant in Carlsbad. It's the one-of-a-kind facility storing nuclear waste from all around the country. But what if we told you there are questions about the science into the plant's long-term safety? Brittany Costello spoke with a former scientist who says he lost his job after raising the red flag. There's an expectation, a reputation, that follows the name Sandia National Labs. Its advanced scientific work is something many of us take for granted. Where does Sandia National Labs sit, credibility-wise? To be generous in the toilet. Dr. Charles Oakes is a geochemist who used to work for Sandia National Labs in Carlsbad for the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, also known as WIP. Part of his job was to make sure WIP and all of the nuclear waste stored inside is safe for years to come. Not only were they not doing the job, they were claiming they did do the job, but falsifying all the, the evidence that went into the claims that they were doing the job. From the outside, there's not much to see. That's because all of the waste is stored more than 2,000 feet below ground. WIP is the only facility of its kind in the world deep geologic repository for nuclear waste. Don Hancock is the director of the nuclear waste program at Southwest Research and Information Center in Albuquerque, a WIP watchdog, even before the first disposal at the Department of Energy site some 20 years ago. Essentially what's in WIP is elements that are contaminated from manufacturing of the components of nuclear weapons, particularly the plutonium core. It might sound complex, but the key to safe storage of radioactive materials is simple, accurate, reliable science and research. Regulators at the Environmental Protection Agency demand it. Sandia National Labs is contracted to do it at a cost of $18 million a year. It's so important that in order for WIP to continue accepting waste, every five years it has to recertify that its projections show the facility will be safe after it's filled up and closed down, safe from that point and 10,000 years beyond. And one of the fears is that a well will be drilled through the repository or near to this repository and water may flow through an aquifer and intersect the well bore. My job was to look at, well, okay, if you do have radioactive material dissolved in the water, will it react with rocks, minerals along the way and be removed from that water, in which case you've lowered the threat? Or will it continue on its merry way, dissolved, and get to the surface where it can potentially hurt people and the, and the environment? Sort of like adding sugar to coffee. The sugar dissolves, but it's still there. During his time at Sandia National Labs, Dr. Oakes says he discovered inaccuracies that called into question WIP's long-term safety, what he believed to be data errors. Oakes says he brought it up to his bosses, the Department of Energy, and even the EPA. After he spoke up, Oakes says Sandia labeled to him a problem employee and showed him the door. Attorney Timothy White is representing Dr. Oakes with the goal of addressing much more than what he believes to be an illegal termination. We're trying to achieve a certain safety standard here and the information that's being used to allegedly show that we've achieved that standard, that we should be recertified in Sandia's case to manage the WIP project is built on, on bad science leading to fraud. We wanted to hear from Sandia National Labs. A spokesperson says because of this pending lawsuit, they cannot comment on these allegations. But attorneys representing them have responded in court. They allege Dr. Oaks was fired after multiple inappropriate interactions with colleagues. They did not go into detail. As far as that expansive data, officials with the Department of Energy with the WIP project say there are a number of quality assurance procedures in place including independent reviews. They expect a recertification decision at the end of this month or early May. Brittany Costello, KOB4.